So um, let's get going. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome. This is our second, um, we're calling them Bright Spots, Bright Spot of the Week. And it's the, uh, the Trisha talk that we've had booked for, for some time with one of our super troopers, Amanda Ogden. And uh, what's lovely about these talks is that it shows the breadth and depth of um, women's lives, really, and often women's lives that have developed over over time. So um, just with as with Amanda, uh, she actually went to art college when she was in her late 30s uh, at a time at which she had four children. Um, and I, I think this is quite a common experience. I, I certainly went back to college when I was in my 30s, when my kids were little. Um, she subsequently did a city and guilds and uh, that led to a teaching career. And so she's done tutorials on YouTube. And in lockdown, she's been doing one-to-one uh, tutorials. Um, I think uh, she'll correct me, but I wrote down on my notes when I was talking to her, make a quilt in a day. So that sounds quite exciting. <laughs> and uh, Amanda, you also feel that um, things like quilting are um, mindfulness yeah. projects, if you like. They're, they're ways of helping you to calm and to feel better. And you had a particular reason for needing that uh, back in 2008, you told me. So you might tell us something about that. So you find it comforting. Um, anyway, you've got a beautiful backdrop, a stunning example of the kind of uh, work that you do. And uh, I'm gonna pass over to you now. And uh, we're all ears waiting to hear your story. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Tricia, for having me and um, hello, everybody. Um, I am going to be showing you some quilts, um, parts of them, because they're big quilts and uh, there's not much space to show them. But you may want to um, go into a full screen um, or the speaker view so that you can see the quilts uh, as I show them. Uh, first of all, I'm just going to tell you a bit um, about uh, how I got to this point. I'm going to enthuse today about uh, patchwork and quilting and maybe persuade you uh, perhaps to give it, give it a go if it's not something you've uh, considered before. So I, I started out my working life as a modern languages graduate from Cambridge University, um, working as an editor for Cambridge University Press and producing school books. And I did that for quite a few years. And here I am now, I'm the owner of a small business, a, a micro business really, called Amanda Jane Textiles. Using, as we said earlier, my not previously much used middle name. And that kind of pivot uh, in my working life happened in quite a small way really, because when my youngest two children who are twins uh, were small, um, a local college had a really great daytime course uh, where you could go and do embroidery for a couple of hours and there was a crash so the boys were happy and I got to sew and at the end of that I really felt I wanted a, a bit more so the next stage was a uh, city and girls in embroidery and by then we'd moved to a different part of the country but it was once again a, um, an FE college that was offering the course and that was a day a week uh, for two years and I really loved it. I particularly enjoyed the design um, side of the course, not just the stitching, but the design. And that gave me enough in my portfolio to apply to um, art college. Um, and they were, interestingly, were running, they don't do it anymore, sadly, but they were running a BA a degree course in textiles as a part-time option. Uh, and that's what I did. I did it two days a week um, for five years. <laughs> it took a long time. Um, and as Trisha said, um, I had uh, four kids and I worked a bit as well. I did some part time work. But I do remember sitting the first day at college on one of the, um, the tall stools with my drawing board in front of me with a beautiful still life in front of me, my drawing board out and I had to pinch myself to believe that I was there. I, I couldn't I couldn't believe it because I think often at school you're you're sort of labeled in one way or another and I think I was channeled into the uh, one particular stream at school I wasn't allowed to do uh, an art subject when I wanted to um, age 14 and you know and then you you sort of get directed in a particular direction so that was my my the way in which it, it changed and the um the textiles degree 
allowed me to do a PGC in textiles. For quite a few years, I taught in school. So I taught in a big comprehensive for seven years, and then I taught in a special needs setting uh, for another six years. Um, it was a really big decision to give all that up. <laughs> I was a middle manager uh, in school, um, and I just felt that um, the reason that I'd done the um, textiles degree I, to learn to design fabrics mainly, if I didn't use it now, when would I use it? So, so I handed my notice and I began Amanda Jane Textiles in September 2014. And it was actually after that that I did uh, another sitting girls course and they've stopped doing them. It's really sad because they're just uh, so great. I did a, um, a, a sitting girls this time in patchwork and quilting, this time doing it over several weekends um, um, over a couple of years. So just starting with uh, a definition of a quilt it has three layers. So you would have your top layer which might have um, pieces of fabric joined together. Some wadding in the middle, which provides the insulation. And that might be polyester like this one is, or it might be made of cotton or polyester and cotton or bamboo or wool. And then a piece of fabric on the back, which is your backing. And those three layers make a quilt. And strictly speaking, the word quilting is about the stitches that hold those three layers together. So on the quilt behind me, uh, there are um, rows of machine uh, quilting, which run in a sort of crisscross pattern alongside those uh, blocks. Some uh, quilts are uh, hand quilted, but it's the, the quilting stitches are really what is meant by quilting. But the word patchwork has dropped into misuse really. And nowadays when people talk about quilting, they generally mean the whole thing, patchwork and quilting of all kinds. So if you were going to have a go yourself at doing some quilting, what might you need? I have some large cutting out scissors, but don't use those for cutting um, pieces of fabric because it's not accurate enough. You need a rotary cutter like this one and a quilter's ruler like this. Normally we work in inches and that's a hangover from the fact that uh, America is um, such a powerful force in the world of quilting. So even younger quilters who would normally deal in centimeters tend to use uh, inches and you uh, use your rotary cutter to cut along the edge of your ruler to get an actual accurate um, shape and size for each of your pieces. You need an iron and an iron board or I have this very nice um, pressing mat here, a wall pressing mat, but an ordinary iron and an iron board is perfectly good. Just we don't call it ironing, we call it pressing, quite different from ironing your shirt at home. You need a cutting board, the larger the better. This is just a small one so that you don't damage anything with your rotary cutter. Um, some ordinary pins, some needles because you do need to stitch in your threads and possibly use them to finish off the binding at the back of the quilt. A large tape measure. So all of these very ordinary sewing tools, nothing very special about them, small pair of scissors for cutting threads, a couple of specialist tools but very small ones. This is a quilter's pin, I don't know if you can see that, it's got a curve to it and that's used for keeping those three layers together so that you can quilt your quilt under the machine. And these are quilter's clips, and they're very useful for holding your binding in place so you can stitch it. If you haven't got these, you can manage with a paper clip. So, and then an alternative to using the uh, quarters pins for holding the three layers together is fabric adhesive, which you always have to use with a mask because it's not good to breathe it in. And then 
there's the fun bit, which is the fabrics. You obviously need sewing thread also. And if you're a beginner, this is a great color to you to choose because this pale gray just disappears into any fabric that you might use. So the basic skill of cutting fabric into pieces and assembling them in a shape gives you the possibility of literally hundreds and hundreds of different blocks. So a block is a complete unit of pieces stitched together. This book, for example, has a thousand blocks in. So lots of options once you get started. And I've brought some quilts uh, to show you, as I said. Uh, and the greatest one for me is the question of colour, choosing colour. And because you all look fabulous forever, ladies, I know that you like colour already, so I think it will appeal to you. You might have a picture in your head of a Victorian style quilt of little hexagons all stitched together, but actually modern quilting is quite different from that. The Winter Roses quilt behind me, which I made for um, Popular Patchwork magazine in 2018, which was on the cover. It's the first time I've ever been, probably the only time, first time I've been a cover girl, um, is quite a traditional block and it uses fairly traditional fabrics. But this one, and I'm just going to show you a little bit of it. This one was made for Quilt Now magazine. And although it's using traditional blocks, it's got very modern fabrics in the uh, fabric collection from uh, 2020. And this one, which is a big quilt, so it's a king size quilt, so I'll just show you part of it. You can see that the blocks have been used in quite a modern way. You've got a, a, a double, double ended uh, arrow there and some quite um, bold fabrics. There's actually snails on this one. And quilts might be made in different styles. So this one, again, I can only show part of it because that's, that's all that will make sense, I think, to the camera on my, on my laptop, is um, a, a baby quilt with a large, bold, modern flower on. I would call that a contemporary quilt. The fabric is unusual. Um, my husband has a, a, a cousin who travels for work in Ghana and she brought these back for me. They are, it's a fabric that's produced by a traditional method, but using very non-traditional non African colors. So he's um, mixed a whole new uh, color palette. On this one too, the quality is made of large, bold This is another baby quilt. And I'm showing you this one because it's got applique on. Applique literally just means applied. The uh, words, it's got hello above this and then baby, hello baby, are uh, uh, stitched on to the quilt. This one is different again. I'm showing you part of it. This is an art quilt. This was based on a, a life drawing. Uh, it's the main fabric is silk and it's silk painted, embroidered, quilted and pieced. There's a little bit of piecing. And then, of course, there are smaller things, which will be a lot easier to show you. So, bag. This is a bag designed for a quilter because you can put your rotary cutter and your ruler and your board into it. This little purse is patchwork on the inside. It's got stripy lining. And the quilting is provided by the small row of buttons which hold the three layers together. Has three layers, holding in the middle, still a quilt. This is a lingerie bag. 
quite a traditional way of putting the squares together, but it's got free machine embroidery for the flowers. We are just past the Christmas season, but this is one of my patterns that gets um, very popular. <laughs> and it's a Christmas tree skirt. This is the modern version of it. Um, and I also have a more traditional one in um, a more of a foresty green and red and white. And uh, Christmas stocking, which has some quite nice strip piecing down at the bottom there. Uh, things for the house, an oven glove, why not? And uh, cosy for a cafe chair, because my husband always said that the coffee got cold when you went back to the second cup, so I made him a rise and shine cafe chair um, cover. And one or two times I've made a quilt with someone else, and that's also quite fun. So I have a quilting friend who lives in the next village to me in County Durham. And on two separate occasions, we've made a, a quilt together, a two person quilt. And they've, both those quilts were, have been exhibited at the Festival of Quilts. And it's worked by um, each of us making part of the quilt and then exchanging the pieces and doing it a bit more and then passing it back again. And then, uh, Last year, we actually made a three person quilt because the friend who introduced the two of us joined in as well. And we did the majority of it by post and the latter part of it entirely in lockdown by passing things over with social distance and putting them post and things like that. So actually it can be quite a sociable thing to do even in the circumstances that we're in now. And to just touch on the, uh, the point that Tricia made at the beginning, I do think that it's true of lots of crafts, but I think it's particularly true of patchwork and quilting, that it is very good for mindfulness. And the um, instance that I mentioned to Tricia when we first talked about this was um, in 2008, um, both my uh, younger two boys uh, were going to go to university um, age 19, they were on their gap year. And I'd made a, a quilt for each of the kids when they left home. So I was all set to make the two quilts for them. Um, when my eldest daughter died uh, in very, very traumatic circumstances. And we were in the middle of relocating from one city to another. And uh, so I was on my own in a borrowed house in an unknown city and trying to get my head around what had happened. And the thing about one of the quilts has got lots and lots of little pieces. And I think the thing about measuring, well, did, thinking about to design it, um, measuring, calculating, cutting and stitching them together just occupied the space in my head and it occupied my hands and it was really, really helpful. And I think we're in difficult times now and we're um, kept in in a single place. And I think it's a really uh, good activity as a source of distraction, um, purposeful engagement um, and even joy. So, thing about quilts is that they're very comforting and they're nice to have over a sofa or uh, on the back of a chair or on your bed obviously um, you can wrap it yourself in one you can just have it over your knees if you're chilly and I like the fact that uh, when you give something a quilt away uh, something of the maker goes with the quilt two individual quilters could make a quilt with the same pattern and the quilts would be different. And because of all that um, multiplicity of choices of the different kinds of blocks you can use and uh, ways of um, putting together and all those different possible choices of color. I mean, each part of each block could be a different color to the person sitting next to you if you were in a class. 
um, they're, they're all really individual. And when you, when you give a call to weigh, it's literally like giving someone a physical hug because they can put it around themselves. Making cuts with babies is a real joy. I um, have several times given away a baby quilt to a special baby that's arrived. They shouldn't, by the way, sleep under a quilt um, until they're 12 months old. A quilt counts as loose um, bedding, so it's not, not safe um, for them to sleep under a quilt. But you can put a quilt on the floor and a child can play on it, sit on it. Um, it's a nice surface to rest on. If you're not that keen on the idea of having a quilt over your knees, maybe that kind of uh, evokes the wrong image for you. Um, I'd like to suggest that you could make a quilt and give it away. It's a rash thing to do. It's a, a generous and crazy thing to do because often when you do that, you have no idea who's going to get the quilt that you've spent all that time making. But it's a really lovely thing to do. And I've heard from the other side how special it is for people who have found themselves, for example, in a special care baby unit. I heard a message from a grandmother who could not believe that the lady coming down the corridor with a trolley full of quilts was going to give her one for her grandchild and not sell her one. So um, these, these charities are worth noting. Uh, first of all, there's Project Linus, and they distribute quilts uh, all over the UK to um, babies, children, and teenagers, um, mostly ones who are sick and in hospital, sometimes to traumatise children. But in every case, um, it's a, a loving message to um, a young person in trouble, in bother. So that's a really nice thing to do, Project Linus. Um, a rather different one is a great organization called Fiddle Fingers Quilts. And that's a couple of quilters who got together to organize the making of small quilts. So uh, ones that would fit com comfortably just across your knees um, and therefore people with dementia. And the idea is to include in those quilts um, fabrics with designs on that might have a resonance for the person or might provide a talking point. They might well also have um, textures to them, added textures. And the other thing that could be added is a small object which could be stitched onto the quilt and it provides a stimulus for conversation, but also um, something for restless fingers to do to relieve anxiety. And the third um, charity I'd like to mention to you is called um, Quilts for Care Leavers. And that is um, linked with the poet Lem Sisse's um, project to provide a Christmas dinner for young people leaving care at 18. And that was the point also um, at which uh, quilts could be given away. And to give a, a quilt to a care leaver is also sending a message. So let's say you, uh, you want to have a go at this. <laughs> I can help you. Um, and I've got quite a few free resources. I am a, um, a fabric designer. I have 119 fabric designs and some 50 patterns for sale, but I have lots of free stuff too. So I have... Um, some YouTube videos which have the absolute basics of threading up with sewing machine, if you haven't done it for a while, um, uh, threading um, a needle and putting a knot in the end of the thread, and really basic cutting fabric and making a block, a particular block. That then links with a pattern that's available on my website, on the tutorials page, where you can download the whole pattern and it's called the animals quilt and my quilt's got uh, Australian animals in the middle of it because I have a cousin in Australia so it's got kangaroos and wallabies and things like that on but you can use the use the pattern to do your own with uh, in cats in the middle or indeed um, rosebuds doesn't doesn't matter it would give you a start um, 
I also, um, in, the year before last, um, did a sampler quilt during the year. So this is, I'm showing a small part of a single bed quilt, has 12, 12 inch quilt blocks on. And on the tutorials page, there's a link to um, all the pages where each of the sets of instructions for the blocks were given. And it also uh, gives you the links to um, instructions for adding sashing in, for putting borders round, for how do you layer it up, how do you put the binding on, all of that. So all the instructions there to make this quilt if you'd like to. And then this year I'm doing another quilt in a year. And this one's a little bit different because this actually uses my, my fabric. Mm. Um, this classic with um, pink and um, greens and white. And I'm releasing the instructions one month at a time, so it's not overwhelming. So Janus was just about how much fabric you need. And of course, you don't have to use my fabric. You can use any fabric, but that's going to go on all through 2021. And that's on the website as well. Hello. Why not have a go? <laughs> That's yeah. fantastic. That, fantastic, Amanda. That was absolutely brilliant. Loved it. And um, thank you for showing us all that brilliant work. It was it was really good to see. Um, and what we'll do, we'll make sure that links and uh, uh, and ways to find you and ways to find the things that you're talking about, we will make sure that we put those um, uh, where they need to go. They'll be on Super Troopers and uh, and so on. And thank you. Um, if you keep an eye on that on Super Troopers so that you can post any comments underneath and so on. So um, let me hand over to Brian. He's going to ask you the, uh, the questions that we've had. Yeah. Yes. Um, so Hannah wants to know, in terms of applique, when you applique on letters for the top layer, is it you just, do you do it before you join up the shapes? So you don't applique through the three layers, you applique and then add it on. How does that work? Um, you would normally applique onto the, the top layer. And in fact, in the case of that baby quilt, I applique the letters onto the individual squares. So the, the B went onto one square and the A onto the next one and so on. What you might do once you put your three layers together and you've got your applique letters on, you might decide to quilt through the three layers round the outside of the letters, say, and that would make those letters sort of stand out. Ah, okay, perfect. Um, in Sarah would like to know, is there any sort of abstract quilting with random shapes? Uh, she's thinking of someone like Kandinsky would be an exciting design. Absolutely. <laughs> yes, um, that's called improv um, quilting, short for improvisational. And there are some really excellent modern quilters who do improv uh, quilting. So they actually use their they're big cutting out scissors to cut out uh, and put the pieces together and it's much more like a, um, a modern painting, exactly that, an abstract painting. So I think there's lots of scope for going completely off piece uh, in a very interesting way. So yes. Okay. Um, and then a couple of questions about sewing machines. So Barbara yes. wants to know, do you need a sewing machine? Not absolutely, because you can hand stitch your pieces. Mm -hmm. And um, I've one of my patterns is for a large single quilt that is all traditional stitching over papers. So you uh, and, and it is hexagons, but using very bright modern fab fabric spy cave facet. Mm -hmm. So you you could do that. And I have known people do um, other quilts and any I mean, any one of these, this one I showed you at the beginning, uh, that's been put together on the machine. But each of those seams, I could just as easily stitch by hand. So you can stitch by hand, you can, um, and you can definitely quilt by hand. That would just take you longer, but you can. So you don't have to use the machine. And I realize I didn't say much about machine, but you, you really do only need a sewing machine that will stitch straight stitching in a straight line. You don't have to have a special machine. And my standard Benina that I've had for 30 years, I have used that to quilt as big a quilt actually as a double bed quilt, um, just by very carefully maneuvering it under the, under the needle. Uh, so there are special, certain very expensive sewing machines, especially for um, 
quilt making, but you can manage perfectly well with a regular machine. One thing which, if you get into quilting, makes a difference is the foot that you put on a machine because every single, apart from the improvisation of quilting, every single quilting seam is exactly um, a quarter of an inch. And I have a, uh, I splashed out and bought uh, a foot, which is the bit that goes under the needle, uh, which measured exactly a quarter of an inch, which has made me a much more accurate quilt than I used to be. So that's, that's been a nice thing. I mean, there are, there are endless bits of equipment and special things you can get for patch and quilting, but I quite like keeping things as simple as I can. And the other thing I'd like to say is you don't always have to have new fabric. I'm a real, um, real fan of doing using recycled fabrics and at least two of my quilts were made the whole of the top was made using recycled fabric one of them is made with men's shirts it's called pinstripe and it's a collection of cast off blue shirts um so you know there's it's, it needn't be an expensive hobby of course yeah. um, if, if i just if i just come in here too we had somebody on super troopers who um the person's a a friend's mother had died and she'd left a lot of silk scarves and that friend who was a quilter made her a quilt using those silk scarves so it was a memento of her of her mum and um you know that was a lovely lovely thing to do i think she mentioned the challenge was that those scarves were different weights and of course silk is quite slippery so it was quite a challenge but i, I thought that was a lovely a lovely idea uh, sorry, back to you, Bryony. No, I, I mean, that, the, sorry, you go, Amanda. No, I was just going to say, um, generally speaking, you do want a woven fabric. So you need a fabric which is going to be quite strong um, with, a, with a weave going in both directions and you want to cut it along the, um, the straight grain of the fabric to stop your quilt, your um, quilt squares going wonky when you don't want them to. Um, so you can, uh, uh, occasionally use um, a knitted fabric. I was commissioned to make a, a king size bed quilt from a bit like that, a memory one. This was actually for a whole collection of t-shirts that the um, person commissioning it um, had collected, um, lots of places she'd been and uh, bands that she'd followed. Um, and it was possible, but all of the t-shirting fabric had to be um, strengthened with um, um, a, a lightweight, um, bonded fabric on the back so it would behave like a like a woven one but apart from that no no real limits except from as you say to show the weight of the fabric um, if you're going to use different kinds of fabrics together that that's going to go a bit trickier you don't really want to go for a furnishing fabric it's a it's a, um, like a dress weight cotton is what you're after I think that's perfectly answered the next question that I was going to ask. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. So actually, the final question, which I think um, is a really good one to end on, is from Catherine. She's asked, do you have to be a really good sewer to quilt? Do you mean like a really super accurate one who makes perfect dressmaking items? If so, then I wouldn't have gone this far. <laughs> so I don't think so. I don't think so. I think there's lots of pleasure to be... Um, had from making marginally imperfect quilts so no perfect thank you i'm sure that will encourage a lot of people like me who uh, who would not count themselves as um, even an adequate sewer but uh, who knows one day i might be moved to uh, attempt to quilt i just noticed in the comment in the chat note below it was helen chanter uh, who is watching and, and out there who who made that quilt um out of the friend's scarf so well done helen i saw it on super troopers and it was a fantastic oh. <laughs> congratulations to you helen uh, you did a great job there um okay so uh, uh, I just need to, to, to wrap up really um, just to say thank you so much Amanda I really really love these sessions where we have super troopers who come on and tell us about their lives or tell us about their skills tell us about all the things that they get up to and showing I think the diversity and richness of older, older women's lives you know uh, we're a much overlooked and neglected bunch uh, of people in society and yet you know all of us know that we're doing amazing things and uh, I count your quilts very much under that uh, heading of amazing things uh, so well done you and uh, we'll make sure that uh, people can find you and uh, and get your resources that you've been talking about um, what, what do you call yourself on super troopers 
Oh, that's a good question. Uh, I think I, I think I, I think I'm on that as myself. So it's Amanda Jane Ogden, but my uh, my business name is Amanda Jane Textiles. Okay, so Amanda Jane Ogden. So if anybody wanted to uh, direct message you or talk to you on Super Troopers, they could just put at. Uh, how do we do it on there? We just you just type in the name, don't you? And then it, it highlights itself. So yes. uh, yeah. I would I would have come as myself, not as a, a company. I'm sure oh. it would be my own name. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll make sure that we uh, that people can find you. So um, so thanks all of you for coming along. We had uh, over 100 people on this call, Amanda. You should be very flattered uh, that they were really enthusiastic and keen to see what you had to uh, to hear what you had to say and uh, I'm delighted that so many people uh, wanted to come. Um, I'm going to remind you that tomorrow we've got um, a, a cookery session with uh, Leonie Wright. She's made a delicious, um, we, we, we have actually recorded that, it'll go out tomorrow as a video, uh, a, a cauliflower and red pepper soup and some delicious looking um, seed based uh, crackers which I'm going to have a go at making and uh, see if I can make them and I'll, I'll be showing those on the following week so that's something to look forward to tomorrow um, and then Thursday we've got another live zoom session which is all about exercise so tone up Tricia that's with my uh, personal trainer and on Friday don't forget the film club which is um, about Ruth Bader Ginsburg brilliant film so thank you very much again Amanda thank you to all of you and bye-bye everybody bye-bye thank you <laughs>